Hey, hope you're having a great Christmas Eve. Today is my 24th strategy of the holiday season. I was able to sneak away for a couple minutes. My kids are super excited. I got some more gifts to wrap and they've actually unwrapped a couple. So hopefully I can get some quiet time here while they're in the shower and bath time before we watch a movie. And today for the 25 days of Christmas, tomorrow's the last day by the way, I drew coffee shop. This is a little bit more difficult. It's kind of, I guess it's really the first product a true product that I've drawn. Um, when you when you think of just, you could have online distribution, you could order beans, uh, you know, you could grow, you could be a distributor, right? You could, or you could have a shop. So I'm gonna focus specifically on the shop. I think that's really, you see those pop, these kinds of businesses popping up all over the place. And it's not just about good tasting coffee, right? So when I'm sitting here thinking about, you know, initial holiday strategy. I think there's some cool stuff that you could do, honestly, to get people to come in the store, get some foot traffic, or if you just started to, to grow exposure or recognition for your business. Um, probably initially, you know, I'm thinking of uh, developing your own products, uh, not necessarily coffee, but uh, things that you can add to coffee or that go with coffee, right? So I think most places have pastries, um, you know, toppings, or I guess stuff that you mix in it, different drinks and uh, maybe uh, fruits or snacks. I don't. You don't really normally see uh, food, true food. So maybe that's something that you want to to tap into. Maybe not, because you know it's it's a little bit higher uh, of a bottom line if you if you start to do that, and you have other regulations and stuff that you have to follow. So all these things, you know, if if you don't run a business like this, you know, you have to consider. Uh, it can be easy to say, hey, man, you got to do this for marketing. You got to write a blog about this or whatever. But at the end of the day, like we want to come up with some ideation that can. I can drive revenue uh, and grow the business, you know, in a qualitative manner, right? Um, so, uh, you know, products I'm thinking initially, you can go a bunch of different directions. It's really based on, you know, what your market is, who's coming in the store, what people value. Hold on a second. Um, <clears throat> and then how you differentiate yourself, right? What's, what's your true value? What's your passion? What can you add into it? And then what type of capital do you have? all these things play into the decisions that you make. So I'm thinking you just do something simple. I know uh, something that's kind of popular that goes around that you see pop-up shops all the time uh, that's kind of relevant to coffee, I guess, is the edelberry syrup stuff or honey, right? So if I'm thinking you, you do something like that, jar some stuff up, make, you know, do it local. That's what you should do anyways. If you have a coffee shop, you should want to tap into the local market at all costs because Starbucks and Dunkin' and Dutch Bros, is, they're on every corner now. Um, but I'm thinking of, of creating something even more creative, right? We don't want to just be generic with it and say, hey, this is an option. Why don't we create a brand out of it? Um, so I'm thinking of, you know, during the holiday season, other than drinking coffee, staying warm, uh, even if you're in Arizona, you know, you, it's, it gets cold there in Florida in the morning. So everybody's trying to stay warm. Um, but what about sickness, right? What about healthy stuff? That's why I was initially thinking of ed edelberry. And so what if you could come up with some really cool uh, ingredients, even if it's not, ha it's not coffee tasting, but I think you can make some of the products that way. Um, but do some cough syrup, like some coffee syrup, but so spell it C-O-F-F. -F. Uh, maybe the E is silent. I don't know. And do some syrup. Uh, and I actually, I was, uh, I cross-checked this <laughs> Because I'm, I'm starting to think think about this obviously throughout the day after I, I've been really busy, but you know, how do you, how can you really make sense of something like this? Um, maybe maybe that's cheating, I drew, drew the business earlier. But, um, you know, at the end of the day with uh, cough syrup, I think would be really catchy, um, is my point. And you don't want, man, I kind of lost my train of thought there. But you don't want, uh, you know, to, you know, be, I guess what I'm trying to say is be too generic with it. You don't want to just do something to do it. Like make something really good, uh, spend some time on it. You can offer that stuff. My point is that's how you can get some foot traffic. It's not really my strategy here. Oh, I cross checked it. That's what I was talking about. Um, and they actually, I did see that some people were offering some coffee syrup, obviously the flavors and stuff. Uh, when I found a place actually local here in Memphis that uh, they kind of create their own flavors and stuff. It's kind of cool. I was like, wow, I'm not the only one that thought about this. So it's probably a good idea. Um, then the next thing I'm thinking of is, you know, there's all kinds of holiday stuff going on, events, and we went ice skating today. And, and if you're able to pull up a truck, like a, like a food truck type thing, or a mobile unit that 
people can come up to at different events and try stuff or maybe you're, you're giving away coupons to come in the store maybe you're just at the event you're not even having to set up shop if you're your budget's smaller or you don't have that capital during the holiday season or you don't want to spend that money maybe you just want to build awareness have one of your employees stand out there pay them hourly um, give people 75 cents off a cup or a new product or uh, you know a pastry or a scoop of ice cream or something frozen yogurt whatever it is that you're offering off offer a little bit off of something to get them in to buy something else that way you're not giving away the barn like i say all the time you're not uh, cutting costs to get foot traffic because at the end of the day, if the experience, I keep saying that at the end of the day, but if the experience doesn't resonate with somebody or they're not like, man, this is my spot now, then, uh, you know, you just paid them for no reason. Uh, so before you do all that stuff, you got to make sure the culture's in order. You got to make sure you're uh, from the walk, walking in the door, or at least from the first impression on social media or your website from to walking in the door to that exchange, right? Uh, interaction with the, with the cashier or barista. Um, and then the product, right? The product, the follow-up, the deals, the offers. A lot of people offer loyalty programs. I think maybe that's big for millennials these days. I'm not big on it because I think, you know, you're giving away your information to constantly be marketed to, but there's opportunities for that too, just by getting people in. And, but it all, it all hinges on the product being good and the experience. Otherwise, you're just another coffee place. Um, so anyways, these are all just different types of things you could do, uh, even offer partnerships, or, or put together partnerships with people, hot cocoa dealer or chocolate shop or something where you're maybe able during the holiday season to, to dovetail some ideas that, you know, some ideas that are, that are uh, similar or something that you can work on together with, for affiliate marketing. That way your costs aren't as, as high as they would be if you're just a small operation. Um, but if you had enough of a budget to, to do a commercial, I think, you know, a lot of these these coffee places, if you really research them, and I haven't, so let's just get that straight. I'm not an expert at coffee. I would be if you were to hire me, like I say, with every video, I would look and make sure that we're certain on the things that we're doing. But at the end of the day, <laughs> at the end of the day, most of these places, these shops, they have a culture about them. There's an aura about them. Certain type of people enjoy it. So I think when it comes to communicating something, anything during the holiday season, really along the lines of everything I've been saying up to this point, you wanna make sure that that experience draws people in. People come in to get coffee all the time, but if they're on the go, they're gonna go through the drive-through. Lots of people go to Starbucks, why? Because they have Wi-Fi. If you really think about it, that's re really was the foundation of a lot of their success. They get people hooked on the coffee because they're sitting there using the Wi-Fi, the free Wi-Fi that's actually good Wi-Fi, it used to be somewhat quiet in there, a peaceful environment. Really, it is kind of an elegant uh, uh, store design, I guess you would call it, and layout. Um, so it's not uncomfortable, right? Um, but people know what they can expect, and once they get used to that, it becomes a habit, and it becomes a part of the routine. And Starbucks, they become branded by Starbucks. So my point is, it started with the experience, though. I mean, yeah, their coffee tastes good, but do people really go go in there to to get energy like is that because there's you know if if that's the case there's way uh there's tons of ways to get energy that you don't have to pay six dollars for for a cup of coffee it's something that they become advocates of that they stand for the brand and they're it, it kind of builds their equity, like their emotional equity when you really think about it, they're carrying that cup of, it's like a status symbol. A lot of people think it's like a status symbol. You see it on people's computers, there's stickers and everything. Um, I keep talking about, I hate, I hate talking about Starbucks, honestly, because I hate, I really dislike that brand and what they stand for and stuff and how they went about it, kind of tricking people. But I use it because everybody, everybody knows that. Dutch Bros is really the fast and go stuff. They don't really have a lot of indoor scene. That's fine, they got a lot of flavors, kids love it. Uh, everybody has their go-to strategy that works. And when it comes to coffee, I think if you're gonna do a commercial though, you wanna paint the picture of that culture. And if you're gonna paint the picture of the culture, uh, do it during Christmas, different types of people sitting in the environment, maybe something that they're doing, maybe you have a unique environment that where people could rent out the space, right? And you showcase that. Maybe people come in there, rent it out, they're sitting by a fire, a really high class coffee shop, right? Maybe in Scottsdale, Arizona, or. Uh, Arlington, Tennessee, I was just up there today, Germantown, 
a little bit nicer, ritzier places where you can kind of come in and get that aura, that atmosphere where you have privacy or maybe quiet. You could maybe rent that out, open gifts, maybe do a gift exchange, maybe have an office party there. Um, you know, all these things depend on, you know, the capability of, of your business. So I can't really nail something down, but I do think that at the end of the day, when it, <laughs> said it again, when it comes to a coffee place, the coffee is important, but the culture, uh, not just the design, you know, people try coffee shops because it has a cool design, right? Cool logo, looks cute, looks attractive, appealing. Um, but people come back, uh, people, uh, what's it called? Not relapse, but, uh, um, you know, come off, what, is, what am I looking for? Where they're not addicted to Starbucks anymore. The goal, and my point is the goal of any type of coffee shop, if you're gonna do a commercial stuff, it should be get, to get people to detach from Starbucks and these main, these major chains, uh, these major coffee chains. And, and the only way you can do that is, is compete with what they're doing and do it better. Um, you know, if you, if you got maybe a mobile unit or something, you know, showcase that, showcase the events that you go to, that you set up shop at. Uh, um, obviously your cart and everything matters how it looks and, and who's the barista and stuff. But um, if that's your value is, is mobile, then show, show the experience, the mobile experience, all the capabilities you can have, what type of setup you can have. Uh, that it's not just a street, street taco, you know? Um, my point is tons of different people love coffee, almost every single culture. You know, you have tea drinkers and coffee drinkers or energy drinkers, but most people like a good cup of coffee. Um, and most people like to sit down and enjoy that cup of coffee with somebody. So how many different type of interactions, uh, conversations or situations can you paint in a commercial that shows somebody getting something done, somebody having their privacy, right? And peace and enjoying that cup of coffee, maybe by themselves, somebody doing something with a group of people that's enjoyable, uh, with that space, with comfort, uh, with with uh, service, good service, right? And then uh, good coffee, uh, you know, people that are loving the coffee. What are some added elements you could throw at the end of the commercial? Not as a sales pitch, as an add-on to upsell people, but to say, hey, we want to do it different here. We are different than Starbucks and Dunkin' Donuts and these other places that you may go to for certain needs. If you're doing a corporate breakfast, go to Dunkin' Donuts or something, right? If you're doing a meeting, office meeting, business meeting, you go to Starbucks. If uh, you know, you're out with your friends or something, you want to get a quick coffee, you go to, uh, to Dutch Bros. So where do you meet in the middle? It's going to be that more of a luxury experience of a mom and pop place with, with something that's unique that uh, people want to pay uh, for a product to experience. So um, in a nutshell, that's what I would initially do. S super simple, right? Super authentic. Uh, maybe be a little bit vulnerable with some of the, some of the, uh, interactions or you know conversations maybe uh, or intimate moments maybe and 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 try to to drive it home like I said to reach as many different people as you can in as many different situations and then round it off with a really elegant atmosphere that's peaceful calming uh, high quality maybe elegant white white black brown you know really really uh, lots of white colors and uh, let them know, hey, this is this is a roasted uh, experience that you can smell through your TV. So, um, yeah, obviously, I think I come be able to come up with a lot better idea with more time to think about it and being able to sit down with somebody and understand their identity and culture and vision. Uh, but uh, you know, I'm committed to this to the 25 days of Christmas here, and I wanted to get on here and just ramble out some ideas. So at least uh, we, I would have a starting point of if somebody were to be interested or intrigued by what I have to say. So be purposeful with everything you do. Have a great Christmas. Don't drink too much coffee. Stay up too late tonight wrapping presents. Get some sleep. And always remember to pre-focus.